is just a uh, minute or so late. Um, anyway, welcome everybody tonight. I want to first let people know um, that there's a road closure on um, Highway 9 at the Brookdale slide that will commence at 10 o'clock. So in order to get everybody um, out of here in time to get home and leave nobody stranded here in the north part of the valley, um, we're going to uh, aim for a 9.30 hard end of the meeting. So I'm going to rearrange some of the items on the agenda in the order that I think it's absolutely necessary to get those addressed. And hopefully we'll get through the whole agenda. Um, we've got three hours to do that, and I don't think that's terribly unrealistic either. But, um, but the order of uh, the items on the agenda um, will reflect necessity. So I've um, prioritized them in uh, what I think is an appropriate order. So anyway, um, First, before we get started on the open session agenda, um, we'd like to report out one statement from closed session, and that is uh, regarding the public employee performance evaluation. And that, uh, so I'm going to read this statement um, that uh, we prepared, and that is regarding agenda item number 4A, district manager review. No action or discussion took place during tonight's closed session. During. Oh, um, yeah, this is um, item 4E on the closed session agenda. So I'll start again. Um, regarding agenda item number 4E, district manager review, no action or discussion took place during tonight's closed session due to limited time available, a limited time available and a packed agenda. In order to move the review process forward, the board would like to schedule a special meeting in the near future for this purpose. May 31st has been proposed subject to coordination with district staff. So we'll be coming back to the district manager's review um, in something like a couple of weeks. So um, at this time, I will convene um, to open session. And um, we will um, I'll ask staff whether there are any additions or deletions to um, open session agenda. Okay. Um, seeing none, then I'll open it up to oral communications. And this is the portion of the agenda that's reserved for item oral communication for the public uh, for items that are not on tonight's agenda. And in consideration of uh, our time constraints this evening, um, I hope people will remember that and will um, be able to get through tonight's agenda. So if anybody would like to comment on anything that's not on tonight's agenda, and I have one speaker slip from Ms. Henry, uh, who can uh, speak first. So, President Bobman, is it your intent to strictly enforce the three-minute limit for this oral communication? In period? Randall Brown's manuscript on page 97, he writes, Henry, a former credit union CEO quickly familiarized herself with the district's financial situation Instead of waiting for a government check, the Lompico board used reserve funds to pay for fixing the Lake Boulevard main, causing a cash crunch. Water sales were down and employee costs were up, resulting in a two-year deficit of 171000 The loss emptied the reserves and capital improvement accounts reported the local paper, probably a blog. The main, water main on Lake Boulevard was fixed in 2011. In the grand jury report of May 2010 on Lompico, it says a healthy water district would pull money from its capital improvement fund or reserve fund to address the financial challenges. But Lompico Water District had no money in either fund nor does it have the realistic capacity to attract new sources of funding, such as bonds or loans. And then on page 100, um, he states, after many negotiations with FEMA officials, agreed to uh, contribute enough money to cover the estimated $50,000 Lake Boulevard main replacement. Well, this is when SLV stepped in. Here's the contract. Jim Mueller, Rick Rogers, 
volunteered to oversee the project, and they did loan us $30,000. And the project was finished April 25, 2011. And we submitted a claim to FEMA for $60,000. The other thing that he's, and I'll go back to page 98, where Randall Brown says um, that it was decided that Lois Henry had a, a conflict of interest. This was in 2009. Well, I didn't have a conflict of interest. Randall Brown puts that in there. But anybody could go to the FPPC site and see, I did not have a conflict of interest. And so, errors, or was that deliberate? I have no idea. The other thing that he doesn't talk about is that Lompico was commended for taking hard steps to improve our situation in Lompico. And it's in big bold. And he leaves that out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Lowen. Hi, Deborah Lowen, also from Long Beach. I've been coming to the board for the last two years. In June 1st, it will be the two year anniversary of Long Beach joining SLB. It's not a very good anniversary celebration right now because I keep asking about what, what, where is the progress on our CIP program. It was originally all supposed to be done in five years. We are at year two now. These are very important CIP projects for public health and safety and also the district has a contractual obligation. I ask for this to be put on the agenda specifically last month or this month so that we can really resolve this, have a workshop, do some the going over what needs to be done, much like your ad hoc committee is doing. And in fact, I think the problems that are holding up the Lompico projects are exactly the same problems the district is now looking at for the entire CIP project. So this is no longer considered a Lompico problem. According to a Gantt chart that the district manager gave us in February 2017, by June 2018, in a couple weeks, the Lewis tank should be 65% complete. The laterals should be 40% complete. That's 200 out of 500 laterals. The PRV should be 50% complete. That's four out of the eight. The interconnection should be 90% completed. And the SCADA, 20% completed. What we have instead are some meters replaced and $13,000 with the laterals replaced and the temporary stated. We have not had these projects addressed. I went to Bill Smallman's lunchtime discussion on project management and I learned quite a lot and it was, it was a little depressing to hear. These projects are now over budget. The reason they're over budget is because of project management. This board had an obligation to use the assessment money to the best of its spending ability. Every moment you wait, these projects get more expensive. Even the list that I gave you on what should be done by now was a 10-year schedule, not a five-year schedule. We are nowhere near a five-year original schedule. We are way past, way overdue on a 10-year schedule. I have friends, Boulder Creek, Belton, in Loman that are following this and saying, you know, Debbie, none of these projects are going to be done. That's the realistic here. Thank you. Um, would anybody else like to speak in general or else? Um, I don't see anybody's hand up, so I'll close out oral communications. And we'll move on to the regular agenda. Um, in order to expedite tonight's agenda so that nothing um, that is critical that needs to get done this evening um, is left unaddressed, the, the first item that we're going to take up is actually 
uh, the unfinished business item, item 10A, which is the Ompico Assessment District Oversight Committee applications. Um, and um, is there any staff discussion on this, or shall I read from the, um, okay, from the item in the, uh, the packet? So I don't see staff uh, coming in on this. So let me read the... Um, item in the packet. So um, I'll read what the recommendation okay, is on this item, and that is at the last meeting the Board of Directors um, was unable to choose a replacement to the open position on the committee. Uh, in the interim, John Grunow has resigned from the LADAC committee and Lois Henry moved, removed her application from the committee replacement process. That leaves two open spaces spaces and two applicants. It is recommended that the board review this memo and appoint Andrew Rippert and Marianne Lavalbo to the committee. So um, would anybody in the, I'll first open it up to the public. If anybody um, would like to speak on this, um, this is your opportunity to do so. Ms. Henry. I know that Marianne would be a, a good addition to your committee. I would just hope that the new people on the committee would read up on what an oversight committee is supposed to do. The reason the committee, we have the committee, is because people in Long Pico said to me, you can't trust SLV. I said, that's ridiculous. Well, I really need to apologize to those people. The, law, the committee should be reporting to the Long Pico community what's being done by SLV, not be given a financial report that is then filed and never sees the light of day. Thank you. Um, would anybody else from the public like to speak on this item? I'm from Lico, I'm Long Pico, and I'm currently a member of the Oversight Committee and having met with Marianne in previous meetings and my impression of Andrew from the last um, discussion on this topic, I think both would be um, wonderful additions to the committee and I hope you all agree and vote for their acceptance. Thank you. Um, any other members of the public would like to speak on this? No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, if you can come up to the okay to the lectern so that it um, it helps with the recording of the audio for the meeting. Thank you. Well, I'm Mary Ann Clavalvo, and I've, I've lived in the Long Pico for 14 years. I think only one was not here uh, last meeting, and um, I've uh, gone to many multiple meetings at the Long Pico Water Board, and um, look forward to working with this team. But on the time that you had done the last time voting. I missed it because I was sick, and so because it had been postponed. So I'm here now again, and I'm hoping for this. And then um, I work for the County of Santa Cruz for the uh, Department of Public Works, and I'm a um, supervisor of the Counts Payable Department. And I currently do a lot of the reviewing of contracts and putting them into our system at this time, and understanding the process and you know contracts and all the uh, kind of understanding of projects. And have a lot of um, people there that understand the projects, and I, I would hope to be able to help with Excel and many of the um, financial um, things. I would help them with. And so uh, hopefully, I guess I get the vote. I'm not sure what just happened, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, anybody else from the public like to speak on this? I, I don't see anybody um, with hands up, so I'm going to close that oral communications and bring it back to the board. Um, any? I just want to say that I, you know, we only have two openings and two applicants, but I think these are excellent applicants, and um, you know, it's we're we're lucky to get people who are interested in serving and who have such excellent qualifications. I, it's something that anybody is is potentially qualified to do, but just means that they're going to be able to get up to speed maybe a little bit faster. So I think that's that we're we're very fortunate to have. Um, Community so, members who are willing to serve, so thank you. For all the folks who want to be and who are committee members, 
Your service is sincerely appreciated. Okay, um, and I agree. Um, thank you, Mary, Marianne, okay, for coming both uh, evenings. Uh, and and um, uh, Andrew was, uh, has an impressive resume and um, was pleased to see um, him applying. And given that we have uh, two openings and who seem to be two very qualified candidates, I'd entertain a motion. I would move approval of both applicants for both positions. A second. Okay. Any further board discussion? Okay, I don't see any. So uh, call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? None. So, welcome. Um, I um, don't have. <laughs> I don't have on my uh, right now. Next is coming Tuesday. Okay, very well. So, um, hope every um, ready can make it that evening. So, let's move on um, now to the actual uh, new business agenda and. The, the newly revised order okay, um, of that is that we first want to address item 9B, which is the Santa Maria Groundwater Basin, um, um, Water Basin Agency. Do you want to okay. do that or do you want to do, because um, the person here for uh, item E is, is here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I kind of want to follow my list. And okay, you got it, it, you're I don't think your, I think your, appoint, uh, your appointment won't take a lot of time. I don't think so either. Then we'll get to the okay. next item on there. So um, let me get back to the uh, agenda. So let me read. Um, and it's going to take me a little bit of paging through this since we've completely upset the order of this stuff tonight. So. Um, so um, the subject of this is the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency alternate representative. And uh, by the way, the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency is the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act mandated body for the aquifer that we uh, share with Scotts Valley and the uh, Scotts Valley Water District and the County of Santa Cruz. So the recommendation um, from this item is that the board review this memo and replace Director Eric Hammer as the alternate representative representative to the Santa Margarita Groundwater Advisory Committee with Director Margaret Bruce. So uh, again, I'll open it up to uh, public comment at this time. Would anybody like to comment on this appointment? Bruce Holloway from Wall Street. Um, I don't really understand what this is about. Uh, I read in the minutes for March that uh, Director Hammer Vice President Hammer uh, would be missing in action for three months. I think this is the third month, so he'll be back next month, according to what I read. And the next meeting of the GSA is, uh, is, is after that. It's at the end of June. So I don't see that uh, there needs to be a new alternate if, if, if uh, Vice President Hammer is coming back. Um, it doesn't really matter that much whether you have an alternate, because you have two board members. If uh, two board members attend all the meetings, you really don't need an alternate at all. So uh, usually these appointments are made at the beginning of the year and they were last for one year. And I don't understand why there's being a change right now. It seems like some sort of a power play because uh, Vice President Hammer is not here. Uh, so what's the story? Is, is he not coming back? Or, uh, or just because he's gone for three months and, and uh, he's going to be back next month, all of a sudden he has to be removed from being an alternate on the GSA. I don't understand the purpose of this, uh, and I don't understand uh, where Director Hammer is or, or what the status is of, of, of him. But if he's gone for good, I understand this. If he's coming back next month, I don't understand why you're bothering to take up time right now. Would anybody else like to comment on this item? Come on. Yes, I'm a little unclear. You said that the recommendation was to appoint Margaret Bruce to this? Correct. And I'm wondering who made that recommendation and when was that done? Was this open to all other board members? There is another board member seated that could also go to these meetings. Has he been asked and he declined it? Um, 
I'm just wondering who's making these decisions that are not in board meetings where we get to see the process of deliberation. Appropriate to. Um, yes, like the board, the, the board policy manual uh, calls out that is the board president. Okay, that makes recommendations. Okay, for all committee. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, appointments. Um, so it, um, and those are not um, fully. If that's not a round robin table discussion during that process, the president in that situation brings recommendations to the board, which the board can then consider and decide to ratify or. Um, or do something different. So this is very similar to that for the groundwater agency. And it's a recommendation being brought. Uh, the board can now discuss it based upon your input and decide whether or not this is a good appointment to make. So um, this is in line with the other procedures, how other committees are, how committees are handled. And um, your concerns about, anybody's concerns uh, can be expressed during this meeting at this time. So would anybody else like to comment on this appointment? I've been going to the Santa Margarita Basin meetings. And thank you, President Bachman, for finally answering a question. We ask questions, you write it down. If you go to the Santa Margarita Basin thing, the fellow who's the chair, he always answers questions. And I would appreciate if you followed this example. It's not against the Brown Act. Thank you. And I'll comment that um, there was a clarification at the last Santa Margarita Groundwater Basin um, Agency's meeting in which the parameters under which um, how much comment can be made and how much of a discussion and what the nature of that discussion can be in, at that time. It can't be fully discussed but a brief informational response and enough discussion to decide whether to agendize the item for the basic parameters of what can be discussed in response to. Uh, to oral okay. communications specifically. To oral communications. So, um, Mr. Could, could, could you? Bruce Hall, I can. Can you answer okay. Bruce Hallway's question? Um, he wants to know why, if Eric Hammer's coming back next month, why you're appointing Margaret as an alternate to replace him. So please answer Mr. Holloway's question. Um, I'm not going to discuss Eric Hammer tonight. Eric Hammer's okay. Um, Non-presence due to a sickness. Okay, that was uh, announced several months ago. Um, still stands. So I think it would be inappropriate to discuss that. Um, Tonight's discussion is about who to appoint and who would uh, be an appropriate uh, position, person to hold that position at this time. Anybody else like to uh, comment on this item? Okay, I don't see anybody else with their hand up, so I'll close out oral communications on this item and bring it back to the board. Um, would anybody on the board like to uh, weigh in on this appointment? I, I think it's um, an appropriate appointment, and um, I do think, I, I do notice that the other member agencies, their alternates do attend meetings, so it, they don't all attend every meeting, but I think it's a way of um, keeping the alternates up to speed on, on the progress of the business of the agency, and I think that's useful. Um, so I, I do see the point in having an alternate, um, and I definitely think this is a multi-agency um, body, um, it's very important for the status of our, our district within that agency to have good representation and people who are up to speed and know what's going on because it's a very large and complex body and I think having an alternate is, is very useful. Um, and uh, so that's basically in, in response to the question of why is an alternate needed. I believe it's to protect the rights of of our district um, with respect to the rights of the other members of the agency. It's important to have all board members and the alternate up to speed um, in the case of uh, absence when we need to have a vote taken. So I think it's very useful. For, for clarification on that, the 
the Groundwater Sustainability Agency is comprised of two representatives from three member agencies, the two water districts, Scotts Valley Water District, ourselves, and the county. So if we have only one person, okay, if one of the designated members uh, sitting on that uh, joint powers authority that forms the Groundwater Sustainability Agency is not present, we're shy a vote on that body. And um, there could be no discussion there would be less discussion from the viewpoint of our district if we had only one person okay, at one of those meetings. So it's important that an alternate sit in on those meetings and be prepared to be a participant in it um, should somebody not be, should the regularly designated person not be able to make that. So um, this is a way to make sure, okay, um, this happens in a very thorough manner. So, and you're happy to do it. Thank you. Speaking for myself, I, I, I'm willing to serve, um, have some background in groundwater issues, have background prior to the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board serving on the San Francisco Regional Water Quality Commission. I have that on hand. And it's specifically for tickets only. It doesn't include any other sorts of gifts. This is a special there's a form attached that, that we have to fill out if, if anyone from the board or staff is required to um, produce a form 700. Um, but other than that, it's uh, if it doesn't apply to um, the rank file. It's just those that have to file the form 700. Have to, and we have to do the the, uh, the form. The district has to provide the form 802. I have to, okay. I, I did make some edits to the policy based on my reading of um, the Political Reform Act, uh -huh. and um, I believe that the reporting requirement is actually a little more broad than just Form 700 filers, but there's different, there's more limited information that has to be provided for an employee who's not a Form 700 filer. Um, but, so I went through and compared it to the political reform act language and made some tweaks that you may not have been aware of. I probably just didn't. I was seeing cross-eyed at that point. <laughs> but I want to make sure you're aware that it is a little okay. more broad. Yeah, that's, that's helpful. Thank you. And this is being encouraged by CSDA or? CSDA. CSDA. Okay. I mean, I didn't, I read the list of those um, circumstances in which, under which this might get used and they did seem like worthy, okay, situation. Um, so this seems reasonable to me, but what, um, if we made a motion, we would need to make a motion that it would be approved as, with some necessary changes as. Um, oh, no, I already made the changes. Oh, oh they're in here. It was sent oh, to okay. me for review just before it went into the board packet and I went oh, okay. through and made the changes. So it's. Um, it would just require approval of the resolution adopting the policy as written. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any public comment on this? Ms. Lowen? Um, okay. Mr. Pollock? I'm confused. Um, I, I saw a hand from you. Oh, it, not about your oh, coming. Never mind. You, you want to do that? That's fine. Go ahead. It doesn't matter what order we do it. It's okay. Go ahead. No, oh, I, it's okay with me, too. <laughs> well, see. if you want to speak, speak now. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Um, I, I guess I, the policy is written is, is what's in the board packet, and I guess what I'm hearing is that the book has been changed. So I, I, I'm confused. What are you going to vote on? Are you going to vote on what's in the board packet? Yes. The changes have been implemented in this. The changes are in there already? Yes. Yes, that's correct. All right. Um, so... Okay, so I, some of the particulars here I'm a little confused about. So if a firefighter uh, gets four tickets to Disneyland, um, you know, this would be a different kind of special district like BC FPD, um, does that mean it's going to show up as taxable income on that firefighter's uh, income tax? Is that, what, is that what that said in there? That the firefighter gets, he gets all these tickets for Disneyland, but it's going to be on his income tax? President Paul Hunter. I could respond if you want me to respond now or at the end of public comment. Um, I think this okay. okay. Um, no, it's not taxable income. This policy, um, there is an exception to this policy 
that exists, if a ticket is treated as taxable income, then this policy does not apply. But um, this policy does apply when a tickets are provided or obtained by the district, and then the district wishes to give them to employees or board members, et cetera. Um, then there are certain reporting requirements that go with that if they're not reported as taxable income. Okay, I thought I saw something in that packet about taxable income. And, yes. Uh, is there is there a board packet? Okay. So I guess my next question is about the et cetera that you just said. Um, the policy seemed to say that the district gets to decide how to distribute these. Uh, they may be distributed to contractors. That was in there. It, it was in the packet. Um, and, and it says the district will do it. So I assume that will be the district manager will decide who gets the tickets. And um, will he give them to his friends as well as contractors? Is there any limitation on giving them to your friends? I, and I apologize, I don't recall what permits the district to give the tickets to contractors. Uh, can you give me a minute? I'll have to look it up here. Uh, what's the item number? 9A. 9A. Begins on page 7 of the packet. Gosh, I, I was pretty sure I saw contractors in here. I could take public input from somebody else and come back to you. Deborah Lowen? Now, I had a completely different impression, and Gina, maybe I'll direct my question to the chair, but maybe the attorney can answer listen. the question. I assumed this had to do with the Valley Women's Club and the this district voted to give Valley Women's Club free water and to supply $1,500 worth of items for a music festival that's upcoming in June. And in exchange, in the letter from the Valley Women's Club, they said, if you can hear, and we will give you free tickets to go to the show. So how does that apply? And, and I assume this was to handle that kind of problem because that really does seem like a conflict of interest. If the board votes for something, they're giving free tickets. It's to employees. It didn't specify to everyone in the district gets free tickets. Is it one per? Do each of the board members get two free tickets? Do they get one? What is the value of it? And how does that affect the decision of the board to approve that? And will this policy cover things like that? Um, thank you. I think it's a, okay, and I saw it. that Ms. Morrison wanted to provide a response on this as well. I, I know the answer to that, and the board is not offered tickets. The um, just employees are offered tickets. But she said it also would have, it would affect rank and file as well. The policy. But that yeah, that could very well be. But it's there's a cap of fifty dollars. A cap of fifty dollars for for it to be considered a, a gift. Isn't there a fifty dollar um, rule? Where if it's less than fifty dollars, it's not reportable. The, you know, I don't know in that level of that's not addressed in the policy. That not, may be pursuant to the political to do, yeah. reform act um, yeah. for those who are political it's reform act filers. You're right. right. There is a cap or on gift reportability. Yes. Sorry. Fifty dollars yeah. or, or more. So. Um, for less than yeah, this, this policy, if it's adopted, would, it, would apply to situations like um, where the Valley Women's Club provides tickets to the district. If the district then wishes to distribute them to um, board members and employees, etc., cetera, uh, it would have to follow this policy in doing so in order to make sure that there any one of a number of complications that could be related to this don't arise, including income tax consequences, um, conflict of interest consequences, et cetera. It provides a vehicle for the district to be able to distribute those tickets without triggering a number of various legal um, uh, issues. Yeah. Um, have they ever been distributed? Have there, is this cleaning up something? I mean, has the, in That's the past, right. have there been tickets made of? As long as I've been here, they have offered tickets to staff. Okay. They, we just um, send them a name, um, and that person can go in to the show. They have a list of employees. 
Yeah, it includes consultants, and a consultant would be like a contractor too. It's in Section 8204. Yeah. yeah. It's in the definition of district official. It could be a consultant, it could be a contractor. Is this, in, is this in the memo for your time? I'm, I'm, oh, uh, I'm quoting from Government Code Section 82048, which has oh, okay. the definition of district official okay. to include every member, officer, employee, or consultant of a local government agency. Right, and I, I didn't recall that. I simply took the definition out of the... Um, so that would be people like Randall Brown, former <laughs> President Randall Brown, uh, former President Fred McPherson. Uh, they're all district officials because they're consultants within the last 12 months and then there's the immediate family too so I, I guess I was just trying to clarify can the district manager give these to his friends he can give them to board members he can give them to former board members he can give them to contractors give them to immediate family of, member, of, of employees who else okay um, anybody else in the public want to comment on this item before we close out the world Okay, I don't see any. So back to us. Um, any? I'll let others go first. Um, on this. Well, I'm I'm glad that um, council had a look at it and did a little tweaking because um, whenever we get these suggested formats from CSDA, it's very helpful. I think, but it's nice to have um, it it modified to fit our district specifically. So I think that's useful. Any input from staff? Any about has have we, have we ever run up against people offering? I think in the past, it's been evaluated. First, it started with employees that went out and volunteered to the work. Well, the water was never really left unattended because in case there was issues. But it's, it started with just a couple of employees that were working, you know, a couple of boosts from their family, and then it grew to any of the district employees, and they maintain the name on a list. It's never been outside of the media district employees that I know of. Right. I've sure um, never been offered a free ticket. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's, it's, it's not 100%. But a few of them do take advantage of it. Um, I, I think it's helpful to have a clarifying policy yeah. so that we're transparent and clear about disclosing any gifts or any kinds of tax implications for an employee. And no one employee or manager or management employee I know of has given out the tickets. You know, there's pretty much anybody who wanted could get a ticket to go if you wanted to go. Um, frankly, I'm disinclined on this. I think I don't think it is a um, something that would be abused. Um, it's not impossible, perhaps. I. It, this policy may be more trouble than it's worth. Mm -hmm. So um, it's well intentioned. But again, it's reactive rather than it's reacting to a specific situation that happened in another district. I don't know if that's, you know, if it's recommended because they anticipate this could happen to other special districts and it's good to have it already in your policy manual, or if it's it's superfluous. Or are we heading something off the pass? You know, do we see this as, as are there concerned, is SDRMA concerned if we don't have such a policy for our, SDRMA is our insurance and sort of liability. I, I guess yeah. my question is, is if the district were to receive tickets and give it out, do we have to fill out a form 802 irregardless of if we have a policy or not? We don't receive tickets. But we could, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the yeah. thing is we could. I mean, there, there's a catastrophe and Disneyland says all water, Northern California Water District employees get a Disneyland ticket. Would we have to fill out a Form 802 irregardless? I believe that the law requires um, that there be a policy like this in place in order to distribute tickets in this way. Okay. And I think I could find the citation in here right. somewhere. So if, if we need one and we don't have one, here is the appropriate language. Yeah, my suggestion is it's it's a bit bureaucratic, and that's and it puts you know discretion in the hands of the district manager to, to distribute the tickets. But it's pursuant to a policy that provides protections to the district um, when and if it chooses to distribute tickets in this way and works. 
been done, so I would encourage you to consider. Um, I would be inclined, okay, if we're going to consider something like this, I would be inclined to want to have some in some restrictions internally as to who would be appropriate recipients for it. I don't think board members should, okay, be right. okay, <laughs> eligible for this. Um, and as hardworking as staff, senior staff is, I'm not sure they should, you know, um, be either. I'd like for this to be thought about a little more than tonight to see whether this is, um, okay, wise and whether we would want to um, tighten up the, at least the eligibility. To okay, okay. exclude Form 700 filers. Right. Essentially. Yeah, ex right. Um, district manager is a Form, I think, mm -hmm. Form 700 yes. filer. So. Mm -hmm. um, I think the urgency is what you're seeing at times is that the fair is the first it's coming up. It's right. coming up very shortly in the first week of June. And so, what is the district structure? Do you reject an offer of tickets? If you don't have something? I think you can file. I, I, if you're giving them to non Form 700 filing individuals, um, I think the important thing would be that they we need to look into whether they should be treated as income. And I'm, I'm not sure without taking a look whether that's the case. Some places they consider free parking income. <laughs> so free, some places parking is income. <laughs> that's right. Um, given that there is a, a little bit of a sense of urgency to make sure that whatever is coming up with the water district's relationship with the uh, Redwood Mountain Fair, um, just tossing out the, the straw man here, what if we were to approve this policy and um, ask to have this policy brought back for further consideration at a future date or have this policy run through the admin committee as we are also in the process of reconciling a number of policy matters in the policy handbook. I think it would be appropriate for it to go to the admin committee. I think it's appropriate to go to the admin committee. I, how, what is the timing of that? I don't have a calendar in front of me. Is, but that, the Redwood Mountain Fair is next, next week? Okay. week? Two weeks? I'm Before the weeks. next meeting after that. Yeah. Right. The first weekend of June. So we're not going to be able to... Right. Okay. Which, which is why, to have a policy in place to safeguard the district's interests as this upcoming event occurs, and then agendize this for discussion at a subsequent board meeting for and or modification. For, for potential modification. Yeah. We want to make sure that staff's concerns about and legal counsel's concerns about do, we should have a policy in place. If we do not currently have an adequate policy in place, we should have one. We can honor that. It's sage the, advice. Placeholder policy. A placeholder policy. Tinker with it. Improve it. Okay. In the past, received tickets. I only went. Tickets have only gone to. Of okay. course, I know. Yes. Okay. No, no other. No super. You know, just a direct. Okay. Direct staff. Okay. Of the district. Yeah. No consultants. Oh, I know. There's a name list at the gate. Yeah. There's no tickets that yeah. Yeah. people tell us. The name of all the district staff are there. Huh? Correct. Okay. But it's, it is a value in kind, if you will. Right. I think this year's staff asked for tickets. They wouldn't have to go through that hassle at the gate with the clipboard because it always seems to be cumbersome <laughs> trying to find their name on the clipboard <laughs> or finding someone that knows about the <laughs> yeah, and whether they're physical tickets is really not. Really yeah, not yeah that's issue. it's, it's not the admission. issue. It's it's the free admission. It's the, the granting of the pass. A suggestion: um, this policy could be adopted um, while 
in conjunction with the board placing a limitation on um, who gets the tickets for the upcoming fair. I would go along with that as long as they were um, even non-supervised. I, I don't know, would it be not be fair to have the... All non-Form 700 filers. That kind of Pardon? Is it, are you thinking anybody who is a non-Form 700 filer? Well, that's one alternative, and the other is just for somebody who um, isn't even a supervisor. I don't know. I mean, is, is that too dramatic? But the Form 700, we're already required to file certain documents, depending on what we get, but we get free tickets to the Disneyland or a baseball game or even meals that are overvalued. I think those people are covered, are they, or am I mistaken? Well, this provides us, this, having this policy clarifies what the report reporting requirement is for those types of tickets and how it's, it can be satisfied by the district filing the form instead of individual forms. But yes, you're right. If, if a ticket is given to a Form 700 filer, right. so they, can, they can handle their own compliance with, right. without this policy in place. And we're required to. Mm -hmm. Right. If we receive something and take it. So when something's giving blanket across for all district employees, I personally don't see the point in limiting it if it's clear that it's in the, if it's the opportunities for all. Because like Rick's saying, is is if he were to go or if he were to do something that would deem him to have to file something because he's a Form 700 filer, he would have to do that here regardless. Yeah. So take it to a baseball game or something like that, it has to... I think that's what the, this specifically for tickets only is saying that you don't have to do. Okay. The district has to file an 802, I think is a note gotcha. on the form, if a, for tickets only, this is specific, not, not any other gifts, not meals, not parking, nothing else, just for tickets only. Yeah, and and this, this clarifies the Form 700 filers can comply with the rules without this policy in place. This policy simply provides a different vehicle with a single streamlined form for both 700 filers and other staff. You have a Warriors playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> and non-700 filers, if they receive a gift, are theoretically obligated to report it as income? Not for a ticket if you use the form 802. No, not. But for the 700 filers, for a, okay, you don't need to report it on 700, and it just, um, it gets reported via the 802, but for the non-700 filers, who is it applicable? Okay. Uh, I, I'm not following the, the uh, it, it can be considered in taxable income. Right. So but there's no change in this, in that case, right? I mean, this is no change for people who are non 700 filers? This is only a change for 700 Well, this, this policy allows non-700 filers to receive the tickets as a gift rather than as reportable income without triggering, um, because in order for it to be a gift, in order for them to receive the gift, it needs to be handled on the, under the correct section of the Political Reform Act, even though they're just staff members. The Political Reform Act has provisions that apply to distributing tickets as gifts to staff members as well as Form 700 filers. So this policy puts in place the vehicle to be able to give them the tickets as gifts without it being treated as taxable income and meeting the requirements of the Political Reform Act. Okay. Yeah. Kind of makes sense now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. So I would, um, if, do we need more public comment or are we, are we done with public comment and want to move on? Um, I'll take, I'll take public comment one more. If you could, would you mind using the, so you, we could, so Holly will, okay. Just, just a quick question. How much are Redwood Mountain Fair tickets this year? I don't know. Nobody, Nobody knows. Nobody knows. 30 bucks. 30 bucks? I think it's 20. 25, 30. So board members don't get these tickets, right? Okay, so is it only for employees or employees' families? I mean, it's for families. Hmm? Well, it's for families, yeah, because I've had staff take the whole families. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. usually employees, they're kids type of family, not yeah. their whole family. Yeah. Their like their immediate family. Yeah, immediate family. 
Oh, not the other cousins. Oh, shit. You related to somebody here? <laughs> I tried to get in on it. Too. No. <laughs> Southern California, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Um. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, there's a paragraph here that says implementation of policy. The district manager shall have the authority in his or her sole discretion to establish procedures. And you were talking about various procedures. You know, is it a supervisor? Is it a Form 700 file? Blah, blah, blah. I think it would be better if you work this out yourselves rather than giving the district manager the authority in his or her sole discretion. Thanks. Okay. Um, not really going back, I wasn't intended to go back for a full round of orals, but since I've done that for a couple of people, would anybody else like to comment on this? Okay, I don't see any, so we're done with oral communication on this. Um, <clears throat> I'm not inclined to make a motion, but if somebody else is, I'm inclined to discuss it. Okay. 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 I would I would move approval of resolution number twenty parenthetically seventeen eighteen ticket distribution policy as written. Okay. Do I hear a second? I have a second. Okay. Any further board discussion? Um, um, I'll go for a voice vote first. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Passes. Okay, that was longer. Okay, um, so let's move on to item 9C. The budget. Um, <laughs> this should be quick, right? <laughs> So we've taken it back to, it's been at the Budget and Finance Committee um, a couple times. This is getting the board a high level view of what the budget is, is shaping out to be. Um, kind of trying to get you as much involved now before we have a meeting next month for, for doing approval of the budget. Uh, operating revenues are projected to be budgeted at about $10 million with operating expenses being just shy of $8 million. Uh, non-operating revenue of 1.1 and non-operating expenses of roughly 1.1 as well. It results in a 2.1 million dollar income um, that's anticipated to go towards funding the capital projects um, and the related debt that's going to be related to funding some of the other projects. Uh, for operating revenue, uh, we base it on a 650,000 units of water sold, which is roughly what the the prior three year average was tracking around. Um, we have been tracking higher than 650,000 units a year, uh, but since we haven't had summer months yet, we're later in this, you know, reiterating our stage two water emergency. Um, people will see what the $10 per unit looks like in the summer months. I'm assuming some people were conserved based on that alone. Um, we stay conservative with the 650,000 units. Uh, operating expenses uh, compared to the prior year projected or to this current year projected actuals um, is about half a million dollars. Um, so it's common to see operating expenses grow three to five percent each year due to inflation. Um, this year there are two new hire requests in the budget. Uh, project manager that we're looking to hire for that will be here for hopefully the whole year. Um, and then a water quality, a water quality operator. Uh, that they pushed out to be a Jan 1 hire as a way to you know, shave, you know, save some money. Um, both positions were part of the staffing study that was done, gosh, maybe two years ago now. Um, so those are part of that, that overall study. Um, capital projects, we have about $6 million um, projected in the fiscal year 1819 for capital projects. Uh, about a little over 200,000, I believe, should be reimbursed. Around uh, 4 million will be coming from debt that we'll be needing to take on here. Um, and then the difference will be eaten up by the reserves that, you know, the, essentially that 2.1 in income that we're having, you know, that's going to be majority going towards the capital projects. 
Um, so high level is it's turning out as expected with the rate increase and the increased capital capital project plan. Um, you know, the slated rate increase is factored in to go into effect the same time that it did last year. Um, so all those different things are factored into this. Um, nothing too new and crazy. Don't have a lot of questions. Um, this is coming back to budget and finance. I think on the first, right? Yes. This will be at the. We'll have um, hopefully darn near the whole budget package on June first. The budget and finance meeting. Um, we had to reschedule the date, so it's not at its normal time. It'll or normal day. It'll be on six one. Um, and then in the past, we've typically held a special board meeting to approve the budget. That way, it can be a more lengthy in depth if people want to, you know, depending on what people want to go into process. Um, so I was, I would suggest that we try and have that June 11th or 12th. Um, that way we can have the discussion if they're, if it's in a form that's ready to be approved, great. If not, that leaves a couple days to make any, any changes to get it on the June 21st agenda. That sounds good to me. And Especially since it's going to be back in budget and finance on the first, I'm going to not. Okay. Okay. I'm let conserve some time here and move on to anything else. Um, any public comment on this? So, the 1.8 million for the probation tank is in that budget. Okay. And. Let's say you get the USDA loan. Do you know about what those payments would be? The USDA loan is tricky because you don't get the USDA loan until you complete all of the projects. I understand. Yeah, that. so we will have to get some sort of a bridge loan in between. I'm assuming we're going to need about $4 million in debt, so it'll probably be somewhere around six hundred ish thousand dollars Okay. Um, my other question right out. <laughs> um, okay. I guess I can't remember my other question at the moment. Thank you. Think about it, you can email me. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I, I don't see anybody else uh, raising their I remember their what it is. <laughs> Go ahead. So when does the rate increase go into effect? Is it in October? It or? goes into effect October 1st for your first November bill. So it's on the first billing in November. So it'll be the 11.5 bill and the 11.20 bills that okay. go out for the All right, cycles. thank you. Okay. Um, any other? I have I mean, one tiny question. Mobile services lease Yeah, I just fees. saw that too. I was it's wondering about that. Rather, rather, it's yeah. revenue. We have, uh, we allow a couple places to put oh, cell towers. Oh, the cell towers. Yeah. And we did release agreements. Yeah. And we didn't so, use two uh, and it went up by 1,900%. Uh, sorry, the estimated actuals will go up. That was a typo. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, and we are negotiating a new lease that's a little increase. We have not quite negotiated yet. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, nothing to approve here, so let's move mm -hmm. on to um, um, item 9D, um, which is sort of a financial thing, also. So uh, that's on page 23. So. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I'm glad we got to this. Um, yes. So this is uh, kudos for Stephanie. Um, we received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Um, the district has received that uh, from the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada uh, for our comprehensive annual financial report, the CAFR. So. Um, <laughs> Thank 
Thank you. We Thank liked you. it. That sounds like they liked it too. So. Um, I want to say the, the, the quantity and quality of financial reporting has grown okay, continuously since I've been on the board. And um, I think we're moving into a CAFR version of a budget perhaps at some time in the... Uh, not a CAFR version, but the GFOA has... Mm -hmm. Has our... Has, I don't okay. think I'm well, CAFR is for the financial yeah, report. Yeah, into where I'm ready to do that for this year. But by next year, I'm hoping to get their budgetary award. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So. Okay. Um, anybody else want to? Okay. Anyway, thank you again. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Right. And thank you. Um, so, um, 9F, um, the education grants, and that's uh, on. Uh, well, that's 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 the waiting. I have. Uh, we have a lot of materials that I would like to pass out. Um, <clears throat> the spreadsheets of special magnificence. <laughs> So we had um, the Education Commission met on Friday evening last week. Can you have some for the public if they want that one? I have them over there. Oh, have them. Yeah, they're over there. There's one underneath. Oh, <laughs> one dropped. Yeah. Right, there you go. Oh, you got it? Oh, thank you. There you go. I knew there was another one. Um, so give me a second to review. The first one that I'm handing out is the data collection grant. There were two applications. I'm just going to start talking about it. Yeah. There were two applications for the data collection grant. I'm going to put these down for the next topic. Do the watershed that we It's kind of confusing because there's so much paper. <laughs> And because we did that on Friday night, the, um, the information was not available for the agenda. Okay. okay. species on the sand hill habitat are adapted to very low nutrient in the soil and when broom or acacia takes over those are nitrogen fixers and they they put nitrogen into the soil so the middle school will be looking at if it's approved um, how those invasive species have impacted soil quality and then um, the second application was from um, uh, was from um, a professor from UCSC, Michael Lohick, and he would like to look at how invasive species on the Olympia watershed um, impact soil moisture content mm. and how that impacts um, recharge. And so there's two different topics, both looking at some nuance of soil quality on the Olympia watershed. This this um, data collection restoration grant is specifically, typically, specifically geared towards the Olympia watershed and research that can be conducted there. And so I think they both fit, um, and the, the Education Commission met and discussed them and recommended both, um, both projects be awarded. And that would bring the um, total budget for the data collection restoration grant is $15,000 and they were $5,000 each, so it would be below budget for a total of $10,000. And then we can, if you're, when you're ready, we can move on to the watershed education grants as well. And then we can just bundle, we bundled them together this year and, um, and we, we flew them both simultaneously and so we, we reviewed them all at the same time. So we have one resolution for, for both. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, just one comment. No, I, it, I guess I find it fast. I hadn't thought about the idea that um, certain invasive plants might actually capture water and transpire it rather than get it down to the aquifer. And right. that's an interesting thought. So, yeah. Okay. And, and how they change the quality of the soil is really interesting. Do they have a, a vicious cycle? Do they self perpetuate the changes? Interesting stuff. I don't think it's a worthwhile study to study something, a plant that we're trying to get rid of. Though. I, mean, I would rather them study something like, um, you know, like what I proposed about manual pulling, possibly, how it affects the endangered species. It would be a much worthy study. Right. I think that um, uh -huh. what they proposed is to kind of partner with the uh, eradication effort. So looking at pre soil conditions when the invasive species are present, and then following removal of the invasive species, look at post-soil quality, both of them were, were, were doing that. So it's kind of looking at monitoring how um, removing the invasive species either helps or hinders um, what you would hope to see in the soil quality, soil moisture content. That doesn't make sense to me because you want to get rid of it anyway. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, it's so nice. Well, it's a, it's a good opportunity yeah. for school kids to learn about soil moisture content, evapotranspiration, soil um, quality, various, they're going to be looking at various um, chemical components in the soil. Environmental so phase. It's, it's more of an environmental education opportunity, and it also can, can help with our, our Olympia watershed species eradication. I, I would also think that it would have some impact on perhaps things we could apply to our mitigation bank property because it's going to, you know, soil conversion and nitrogen enrichment will affect the endemic soil dwelling critters we've got out right. there. So I imagine that might be useful information down the road when we're talking about managing our, our mitigation bank chunk out there. Because that's where a lot of our energy is going to be focused is on that one piece of high quality habitat. Well, the high quality habitat is doesn't really have a lot of invasive yeah. species. That's why it's so high yeah. quality habitat. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then if you're ready, we'll move on to the watershed education grants as well. Um, there were seven applications for the watershed education grants. Um, many of them were repeats that we've seen in the past. Um, the Boulder Creek Elementary Parents Club is, is requesting um, $2,500 to help lower the cost for fifth grade students to attend the Camp Campbell Science School. Um, the Banana Slug String Band is offering to, to do music, musical entertainment to five elementary schools and assemblies in, in San Lorenzo and Scotts Valley. And the Family Science Night has been hugely successful for the last two years at San Lorenzo Valley Elementary School, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and that's been great attendance. I've been to one or two, I went to the first one myself and it was great. And then um, water awareness, environmental awareness through science literacy, K through three, K through third, science enrichment at the San Lorenzo Valley Elementary School, and that one is another repeat. So we've had, we've actually funded all of these programs in the past, and so these are going to continue to provide environmental education to mostly elementary school um, kids in the San Lorenzo Valley. They're focused on watershed health, water quality, and um, protecting the environment in general. Um, and then we have a, the exploring the San Lorenzo. River, which was uh, also funded last year by the Museum of Natural History. They're requesting $3,000, and the uh, recommended award is $2,500 for them. Um, they didn't all receive exactly what they were requesting. Some of them were cut a little bit so that they could, um, so that they could fund more projects. That was the recommendation from the Education Commission. And the last one is WaterWise, Water Information Serving Educators Project, which is a new one from um, Monterey Bay 
environmental literacy group. And that will be a series of six sessions in the fourth and fifth grade science class to Boulder Creek Elementary. And students will learn about watersheds, water cycle, aquifers, impacts to cl of climate change, and how humans and clean water and what can happen to water after it goes down the drain and kind of just some practical lessons about where your water comes from and where your water goes and how to manage all of that. And so the um, Education Commission, oh, and then there's actually two more, sorry. There's one more that they've recommended for funding, which is the uh, second time the SLOPE has, a, has applied, which is San Lorenzo Outdoor Preserve for Education. And that is at the San Lorenzo Valley Middle School, and they've constructed sort of an outdoor classroom. And it has some signs up, and they have seating out there in a little small stadium for classes to be held outside. And they're all focused on environmental education, and so they have a sort of phase two of that project, which should be, um, it looks like they have quite some donated labor and materials, and then they're getting some crowdsourcing funding to match this project. So that's $3,000 for labor and materials. The last one is the um, KBCZ radio at um, Boulder Creek Community Radio right here. And um, they are requesting funds to do 10 30 second promo spots, 10 one to three minute promo spots, and five five minute feature segments. Each promotional spot would highlight San Lorenzo Valley Water District topic, activity, service, and or achievement. And that would be spread out over the next year, between May 2018 to May 2019. And um, the commission discussed that topic and decided that they would ask the board to fund that separately through the district's communications fund. That it didn't seem like it was a good educational grant fund match. It felt like it would fit better with the budget time the budget. So all the, all the other ones they've requested become get funded, and those numbers are all provided on your big spreadsheet um, of special magnificence. <coughs> and the total um, budget requested is the total requested funds from all the applications together was twenty one thousand one hundred. The total budget available is seventeen thousand five hundred. And so the recommendation. From the General Education Commission is for a total of 17500 How much do we typically pay for it? How much do we pay for it last year? Every year is the same. About the same? Yeah. Since I've been here, it hasn't changed. Yeah, the budget has, and I think last year we didn't have as many applicants, and so I don't think that we hit the whole 17500 But every year, it's been budgeted year around that. Hasn't changed since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Were you? Did the group? Were there other proposals that were reviewed and fell below the a scoring cutoff, or this was the full suite of applicants? This was the full suite of applicants. Yeah. None of them uh, fell through. Correct. Right. Every once in a while, once in, in the days of yore, we would get kind of non-responsive. Yeah. Applicants. Right. And that hasn't really been happening. <clears throat> We've had long tenure of people on the education commission too, haven't we? Yeah. At least a couple of years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Do they change over with new board members typically? Or the new board members get elected and they get to a new nominee? Right. Education Any other comments? Yeah, absolutely. Um, any public comment on this item? Sir, so this commission, who's on the commission? Uh, it's Donna Zeal is the chair, uh, Lynn Scott, Alexis Cristo, Lee Summers, and Jim. I, I saw some
something where it said that there's normally five members and the board member got to choose something. And if there was a new board member, that person got to choose someone to replace whoever left. Is that right. is that what happens? Yes. Okay. very happy with my appointee. Um, okay, any other public comment? Okay, I don't see any, so we have got public comment. Um, I don't need more board discussion. There is a resolution yep. that I handed out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a number, okay. it's... Okay. It's just it's, it's, it's resolution dos <laughs> <laughs> would be happy to recommend sure. approval of the Education Program Advisory Commission's funding recommendations for the 2018 Classic Watershed Grant proposals, which include both the Classic Watershed Grant and the um, data, 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 collection, data collection and restoration grants. Would, would, you, would you like to um, do anything about the radio proposal? Yeah. Uh, comment on the radio. Yeah. It's evolving to where the coverage is going to be most of the San Lorenzo Valley. There will be, it can be very instrumental during disaster to get messages out, especially locally. Right. Uh, but we're kind of working with them now, and it would be good to, to support them. I think it has a real, a real need or a real good use in the valley for emergency messaging uh, as time goes on. So. It's going to be a good tool to have, and their coverage is just about going to be most of our district or service area. I, I, I'm delighted yeah, to have just, just yeah, some support for community that. radio. I, I'm I'm wondering if if I may ask staff sure. if if the two thousand dollars for their initial foray into a spotlighting the district is a significant enough assistance to them or if it should be not a grant it should be something that we do with them as a communications tool like we would buy space in a in a newspaper of gen general circulation and buy space for a column I, I don't have a sense of what's more appropriate from the staff's perspective but I think engaging and supporting the the radio stations is a phenomenal idea and important. And we're working with them down in New Antenna up and running. As you know, the board approved the location at one of our tank sites. Yeah. They're just getting to the point now, I think it's been a year and a half, two years, of getting that equipment installed. So we're going to assist them on that as well. But it's a, I think it's a great tool to have the value. I mean, it's not necessary for the board to make any action, but just, we'll just do that because it's within our. I mean, it could get approved as part of the, if there's public outreach, yeah. right. budget, just, right. just, mm -hmm. just direct staff mm -hmm. to follow up with the applicant in a more appropriate area. Right. So, so then I would amend my motion to say with the uh, exclusion of the KBCZ, application which would be remanded back to staff for appropriate well, communications. Right. There was no recommendation, yeah. but board recommendation for them, so they're but kind of they, exclu they, excluded they, in this, okay, yeah. this yeah, point. So, so. They, they wanted to make a special recommendation that the board support staff in, in what <coughs> 
maybe sees me as part of our communication strategy. So do I need to amend my motion? Do I? I, I, I lost the thread as to what's in the resolution versus the separate issue that's been placed on the table regarding the radio station. Do we need to include it, that? It, it doesn't speak to it. It's just a yeah. uh, grant. Uh, uh, so whereas, let's see, staff received eight classic watershed grant proposals and two data restoration grant proposals. Seven of the 2018 Classic Watershed Education Grant proposals and two um, would be worthy of funding, so the, the delta being the, the one for the radio station between seven were received, eight were blessed. Um, so the resolution speaks to the number, it doesn't speak to the specificity of which particular grant applicant we're saying may be remanded for other activity. Did we need to include that in our, our motion? Can we just direct staff to um, continue communication with the radio station and bring it back to us in a future agenda item? Well, the resolution presupposes this yeah. spreadsheet of, yeah. of who the participants in it are, including the fact that one of them it, it's just is the a zero-funded yeah. participant. I think it's just the follow-up right. we need to so I don't think they need to be singled out as not no. receiving. No. I think they would right. just not receive the yeah, I don't see that any board action is required no. on the radio station. No. Um, right. So, right. So, so, so then just the resolution as written, and my motion would be to approve the resolution, the resolution 21 1718. Okay, I'll second your resolution, number 21 1718, as, <laughs> as stated in the packet. resolution. Yeah, okay. in the packet. So, um, any other uh, discussion? Okay, I'll call off this on a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Good. Thank you. And thank, if you get a chance, thank everybody on the yeah, commission. It's sure. plowing through a lot of reading. Especially all the teachers doing all the work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> subject matter of this, which is discussion and possible action on recommendation to reaffirm the current stage two water shortage emergency. And I believe, Jim, this is probably you. Sorry, could you please speak up? Yeah, there's back. Oh, okay. Um, the subject is um, discussion and possible action on recommendation to reaffirm the current stage two water shortage emergency. And I'll go ask for uh, any staff. It just. It's way down. Page, uh, 85. 85. I'm going to go out of order. So yeah. I'll find things again. Yep. changeover and so there'll be um, some water shortages in the south system and because F the town of Felton is relying on surface water only they'll they'll be seeing about 40% less 
water than normal, and there will be no groundwater for them to switch over to. So we're asking the board to adopt or reaffirm the stage two water shortage. And um, stage one would be if we were having a 10% less than normal water shortage, and stage two is 20% or, or more. And so stage three goes into mandatory restrictions. So we're, because in the past we've been so successful with sort of voluntary restrictions with a few um, requirements with regard to watering between the after, before 10 a.m. or after 5 p.m. and only watering two days a week and some of these kind of easy lift restrictions, um, we're, we're recommend, recommending the same stage two water shortage. Um, I didn't write down all of the requirements that were in there, but what, one thing that we have done in the past was we had designated specific days of the week for address. That resulted in quite some confusion and often some um, some difficulty with people who are going to be out of town and couldn't get their timers set for Tuesday and Thursday or Tuesday and Saturday or whatever it was. And so um, because that was so successful and our community has been so responsive and we, were, we ended up with a 40% water conservation during the height of the 2015 drought, we have, um, we have decided that at this time we would recommend that we allow the customers to self-select which two days of the week they would like to water. And, um, and, and as long as that's working, then we'll, we'll just go with that. So that would, that's kind of the one thing. Other than that, it would be watering be, uh, outside of the hours of 10 and 5. Yeah. yeah. So, so, not, so not between 10 and 5 during the day to avoid evaporation. And, um, and then no washing your sidewalks and no spraying, no filling or refilling pools or spas. Um, you have it? Yeah, actually, it's pretty well. Assuming that it was, is currently the same as it was in April 28th of 2014. Great, okay. it is. It's the same. Uh, I mean, I could read the, the eight or so bullets. No watering or irrigation between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. No outdoor watering on Monday. Outdoor irrigation is permitted only three days a week. If your address ends in an even number, water on Tuesday, Thursday, and yes, Saturday. Sir, and you're changing yeah. that, mm -hmm. okay? And then um, on your watering days, limit irrigation to 15 minutes per station. Do not wash down hard or paved surfaces. Do not initially fill or drain and refill residential swimming pools. Um, drinking water will only be served at restaurants upon request. And shut off nozzles are required on all hoses. So, all sounds like pretty reasonable stuff. Okay, and I'd say keep on keeping on. Any uh, um, any other board discussion? Any public input on this item? I don't see any. So, um, I anybody like to make a motion? And let's see what pages this. Uh, I'll make a motion that we adopt uh, stage two okay. of water shortage for conservation. Okay. And second. Okay. Um, and if there's no more board discussion, then I'll call a vote on this. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Okay. So this item carries. And I believe. We are at the end of um, new business. I think there's one. No. No one more? Let me see. I or J. J. Um, see, it's the ad hoc committee report out. No. Oh. I don't know if this would be an action. It's a report. No, I, I, I kind of actually think this is a committee report that would be appropriate to be in the. Um, report section. So um, th there's a single page on uh, uh, the first meeting of the CIP replacement program. Um, it was one meeting continued to two days. And um, I guess I can read a few. I'll read the th 
three paragraphs that uh, state what was uh, occurred during that time. And that is that with a time critical opportunity for low interest USDA for a low interest USDA loan, the committee reviewed and staff selected projects for the application for this loan. High priority in road pipeline replacements totaling less than five million dollars. The district must secure and is seeking short term environmental consulting support to complete the application. And I may ask you in a moment if we where we stand on that. Um, and then Second paragraph, to support the project management needs, staff plans to begin recruiting for a full-time project manager to support the coordination of the CIP projects. And I put in parentheses, this position is in accordance with the board approved staffing plan. I believe that's been worked into the budget. So um, that's proceeding um, in concurrence with what uh, the recommendation in the committee meeting was. And the third paragraph in this is in the future the committee will be considering the feasibility of front loading or accelerating as much work as possible, taking advantage of lower interest financing, grouping projects by geography or type, and seeking grants. And additional staffing, uh, parenthetically, a CIP pipeline crew and or a grant writer will be considered. And opportunities for bundled financing will also be explored. So, um, I will ask anything about um, the environmental or anything, or is that is it time to ask that question? Or, um. Well, we've reached out to environmental consultants and have not yet heard back. So. Okay. We're waiting to hear that. Okay. Um, any public input on this item? Everyone's busy. It's permitting season. Okay. The... I don't see public uh, <laughs> comment on this. Any board work discussion? There's no action to be taken. So, um, let's move on. And that takes us to 10A, which is handled a very long time ago. And we move into. Um, yeah, let me find the. So um, item 11, the uh, consent agenda, we have minutes from two uh, board meetings here. Um, I need to um, pull the first, uh, the second one, I was only present at one of the two meetings. Okay. So you're pulling item 10B? Well, 11. Oh, wait, or 11B. Okay. Minutes from May yeah. 3rd. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else have a reason to pull? Okay. Could I just make there was a correction on the other minutes, a, a oh. typographical correction? Um, Absent at that meeting, it had Director Smallman um, and Director Hammer. They were both listed as Director Smallman. Oh, they're one. This is a typo. So, I'm going to both of them. So. Sorry, I mean, let's just For pull them both and we'll address them both. Okay. So, um, let's first address item 11A. Um, the minutes from Board of Directors meeting April 19th, 2018. And you have one correction on that, correct? And that, I think I know that also. What page? It's not the first page, but at, at key meeting, no. Item one, under excused, you had um, Director Ratcliffe. I'm sorry, I can't hear what you're saying. <clears throat> under item one, excused, Director Ratcliffe, Vice President Smallman should be Vice President Hammer. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Any other, any other board discussion? Would the public <laughs> like to comment on item 11A, the minutes uh, from May the 3rd? Or the minutes from April 19th? I don't see any public comment on that, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll, make a, I'll make a motion that we approve. The April 19th, 2018 minutes as modified uh, to correct uh, PP Smallman to PP Hammer. 
I would second that motion. Um, any board discussion? Okay. I'll call the voice vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm abstaining. Aye. Okay. Um, and um, any opposed? So no opposed. Um, three yes, one abstention. And let's uh, address the next item, which is the minutes from the May 3rd. May 3rd special meeting. Right. From the May 3rd meeting this time. Um, and first of all, public input. Anybody want to come in on the minutes from May the 3rd? Okay, I see none. And um, I, uh, I will move approval of the May 3rd, 2018 minutes as in the board packet. Second. second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, any opposed? None. So this passed. So let's move on to um, district reports, I believe. Yeah. And um, so, first of all, any public uh, comments on district re reports? I don't see any. Okay. President Bachman, are you uh, intending to cover all communication for, for, all, for all the reports? Right. So, any public input on um, and my sheet of paper for this agenda item is buried here someplace. Um, oh, okay. Um, so, uh, district reports is item 12. Uh, no public input on district reports. Um, any board discussion on district reports? Not at this time. No. Okay. Um, let me see if I have anything on this before I. Since we're way ahead of schedule here. Wait. There's no such thing as being way ahead of schedule. I, I would right. be delighted to hear if staff had highlights they wanted to share with us. Any, um, <laughs> but if there aren't any, if this I is just thing, um, yeah. the Felton Library, Friends of Felton Library and the County Parks received a $400,000 grant for the Nature Explorer Park that will be associated with the name Felton Library. And all you did awesome. was italics. You could have done cool. colored or something, but yeah, that was awesome. exciting news. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. And I'll point out the photograph that I think uh, is notable, which is page one. 174 of the probation tanks. Um, temporary tanks. Okay. Well, the probation, the new, pro the, new the new temporary probation yep. tanks, and and the aging just, hulk off there filled. in the background. Yeah. Right. Soon to be going away. It's empty now. And I'm curious, is the contractor um, going to dispose of the old tank? That's, it is 100% their project now, and so he's responsible for tree work, removal of the tank, everything. Everything. Yeah. You know, usually there's some pretty, somewhat good regular in those tanks, but that tank is pretty bad shape. You might get a little out of it, but not what people think. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty sad shape. A stick. <laughs> well, since, since we have a few extra minutes, I, I did have a question. I know there's, we're talking about flushing and the filter, the screen's being filled up with magnesium and um, iron. Iron, and magnesium. I know uh, that Manana, iron the, bacteria. Right, the, the, ma the Manana well, um, was yeah. well was that way. Is that because it's everything in that basin and that sandstone that way? Is yeah, that, the majority of the wells okay. in Scotts Valley have iron. <laughs> but we don't have that problem over here on Ben Lomond. Not as bad. Okay. Not as bad. Thank you. And that's a biological process? That yeah. Pulls it out, or is it just a precipitation process? It's a biological process, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Um, nobody else has further um, on this. There are no written communications, and there's informational material of four items. And. Um, 
if anybody has come, we don't need unwritten communication. We don't need to take um, public input. It's an item. Well, it's, it's it's an item on the agenda. Okay. Technically, yes. If somebody would like to comment, then would anybody like to comment on the non-existent written communications? Okay, um, I imagine not. So, um, and then there are four items of informational material. So. And I don't see anybody raising their hand who wants to speak about this. So we'll close out orals on that. And we will adjourn without taking public comment. Anyway, okay. So anyway, thank you all two of you yes. for sticking it out to the last yes. minute. No words. And I'm glad everybody can get home. Yeah, um, right, unobstructed. Actually.